Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Since AMD didn't release a flagship GPU this year, it's not entirely clear whether the new 9070 XT is better than the outgoing 7900 XTX. So let's check them both out. Released in late 2022, the 7900 XTX is technically still the flagship AMD GPU on the market. It's a 24GB card and as you would expect, it has all the features that a modern high-end graphics card would offer. It has an MSRP of $999 US dollars, but it's borderline impossible to find one at MSRP. The cheapest one that I could find sells for $1400 US dollars. I've had my XFX 7900 XTX for around a year and I've been quite happy with it. On the other hand, we have a brand new contender from AMD and that's the RX 9070 XT. It has 16GB of VRAM and it also has all the features that you would expect from a modern high-end graphics card. It has an MSRP of $599 US dollars, but once again, it's impossible to find one at MSRP. The cheapest one I could find sells for $940 US dollars. I just got an ASRock 9070 XT and it's white. Here are the specs taken from GPU-Z side by side. I know you're not here for a specs readout, so let's not do that. The only obvious difference that I'd like to point out is that the XFX 7900 XTX has 3 8-pin sockets for power, whereas the 9070 XT only has 2. Also, the 7900 XTX is much larger than the 9070 XT, so it might not fit in your case. It certainly didn't fit in this 3000D with the anti-sag bracket, and even without it, I had to mount the radiator backwards so the GPU would fit. So with that, let's start benchmarking. We'll be testing in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Let's start with Cyberpunk. The TLDR is that the 7900 XTX performs slightly better than the 9070 XT without ray tracing on, and with ray tracing, the 9070 XT performs significantly better. With no ray tracing, at 4K, the 7900 XTX gets around 66 frames per second in the built-in benchmark with no FSR and 85 with FSR 2.1. On the other hand, the 9070 XT gets 61 FPS with no FSR and 77 with FSR. FSR 2 and FSR 3 seem to be outputting very similar values. At 1440p, the 7900 XTX gets around 141 frames per second on average, whereas the 9070 XT gets 130. FSR does improve performance a bit, but the difference stays. Since we rely more on the CPU at 1080p, the performance difference diminishes for the most part. Without FSR, the 7900 XTX averages 198 frames per second, whereas the 9070 XT does 195. By the way, I ran these benchmarks multiple times over a span of days to minimize the run-to-run -run variance. Also, it seems like the built-in Cyberpunk benchmark is quite realistic, since I averaged pretty much the exact same values when I played the game for an hour or so. With ray tracing though, things take a sharp turn. At 4K, we see the 9070 XT constantly outperforming the 7900 XTX by a healthy 15%. With FSR enabled, both cars managed to hit 4K60, but the 9070 XT still outperforms the 7900 XTX. 1440p and 1080p yield similar results, with the 9070 XT constantly beating the 7900 XTX by anywhere between 13 to 37%. So far, the 7900 XTX seems to be doing better in rasterized gameplay, whereas the 9070 XT takes the lead at ray tracing. However, do keep in mind that the 7900 XTX costs a lot more and consumes a lot more power. It peaks at 403 watts, whereas the 9070 XT consumes 302. That's a 33% difference, and it also runs a bit cooler and quieter, but I guess those things depend on the card that you get. With that, let's move on to Battlefield 1. To be fair, this is an older game, but regardless one that I enjoy playing. This game doesn't have ray tracing support and it has a hard frame cap of 200. Under normal circumstances, at 4K maxed out settings, both cards constantly hit that limit. So I set the render resolution to 
With that, the 7900 XDX averaged 79 frames per second, whereas the 9070 XD did 70. 1 and 0.1% lows also scale similarly. At 1440p, the difference became 16%, but both cars produced well above 120 frames per second on average. Fortnite yielded interesting results. It doesn't seem to be an awfully well-optimized game, but I did what I could. After 5 games at 4K, the 7900 XDX averaged around 93 frames per second, whereas the 9070 XD followed at 90. Once again, the 1% and the 0.1% lows are exactly as expected, but from a subjective standpoint, I found the 9070 XD to be much smoother in this game. I experienced a bunch of weird stutters on the 7900 XDX, I also had a couple of crashes. More importantly and weirdly, the 7900 XDX gave me such a hard time when I wanted to switch the resolution to 1440p. My computer kept freezing and crashing, but ultimately I got it to work. This is not an issue that I had with the 9070 XD. Although the 7900 XDX performed slightly better than the 9070 XD in terms of the average FPS in 1440p gaming, there is a huge difference in 0.1% lows favoring the 9070 XD. I couldn't test Fortnite at 1080p since the 7900 XDX flat out refused to cooperate. So the average frame rates were essentially the same, while the 9070 XD offered smoother gameplay here. Last but not least for gaming, let's have a look at Space Marine 2. With no frame generation, at 1080p, the 7900 XDX averages 134 frames per second, whereas the 9070 XD gets 128 FPS. Once again, 1 and 0.1% values were quite similar. At 1440p, the 7900 XDX averages 112 frames per second and performs 11% better than the 9070 XD, which does 101 frames per second. And lastly, at 4K, neither card manages to hit that sweet 4K 60 spot, but the 7900 XDX performs 8% better. With no frame generation, neither card manages to offer smooth playback at 4K 60. With frame generation enabled, we see some interesting results. At 4K, the 7900 XDX averages 99 frames per second, while the 9070 XD does 84. But the 9070 XD has a redeeming quality here. Since FSR 4 is only available for the newest Gen AMD cards, we can only enable it for the 9070 XD. With FSR 4, the average goes up from 84 to 88 frames per second, which doesn't seem like a huge increase, but the biggest difference can be seen in 1 and 0.1% values. That is quite impressive. We see a similar pattern at 1080p and 1440p with FSR enabled. The 7900 XDX does slightly better, but both cards perform fairly well. Before we have a look at export performance at Premiere Pro, I want to talk a little bit about AMD drivers. AMD likes releasing their products with suboptimal drivers and fixing stuff on the go. I've experienced this with the Radeon 7 back in the day where it took AMD a good 2 years to fully get the drivers up to speed. But I noticed something different this time. The 9070 XD is really stable whereas the 7900 XDX really struggles with the latest drivers. Alright, Premiere Pro. About a year ago, I made a video about a Logitech G305 gaming mouse, and for this video, I'll be exporting that project on both cards and essentially comparing the performance. Despite the fact that the 7900 XDX has 8 more gigabytes of VRAM, it took 13% longer to export the video. This just shows the improvements that AMD made in non-gaming scenarios. Alright, so overall, it seems like the 9070 XD seems to be doing better than the 7900 XDX in ray tracing and non-gaming scenarios, whereas the 7900 XDX still has a slight advantage in rasterized games. However, the XDX is more expensive, larger, and it consumes more power. The 9070 XD also seems to be running cooler and quieter, although this will obviously highly depend on the card that you get. If I didn't already have a 7900 XDX, I wouldn't get one today, and instead go for the 9070 XD. 
but I have one and I won't get rid of it to buy a 9070 XT either. But if you're looking for a new card and you're between these two models, by all means, go for the 9070 XT. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribe to my channel. Take care.